the first totally crucial thing we have to do is get our side chaining happening. So we're gonna grab our kick drum and we're gonna go, actually before we do that, we're gonna enable the compressor on the instrument bus. And if you need to, to do this yourself, what you're gonna do is create a bus and send all of your instruments except for the drums to this bus, as well as your reverbs, except for the one that's on the drums. We're gonna send that reverb to this bus as well. And then we're gonna put a compressor on that bus, just a standard Presonus compressor. And we're gonna grab the kick drum and go to the sends area, and we're gonna go side chains, scrolling until we find the one that says instrument bus. For me, it's called inst bus, insert one compressor. It's gonna be whatever channel you're using, and you're gonna grab that compressor. Switch this so it's yellow, which means it's pre-fader, meaning that the volume of this will not affect this. So our side chaining amount will be constant. Even if later we decide to lower the kick and volume, this thing is gonna be independent of the, of the actual output volume of the kick. So now we can open this compressor and set it up to do some side chaining. So a very simple way to do this is set this, the knee to zero, get a pretty high ratio, can be almost like whatever you want, doesn't matter that much. The attack is instant, the release is pretty long, let's call it like 300 milliseconds, something like that. And then uh, the threshold is what we're gonna use to determine how much gain reduction we want to apply to the other instruments. So to do that, I have to push play and start pulling this down until we start to hear it. So I'm gonna do it in, in an extreme way first so you can really hear, and then I'll do it in a more gentle way. So we're getting about 26 dB of reduction there. That's super intense, obviously. And let's pull it way up. This is to your own taste. I'm thinking somewhere around here, between six and nine, perhaps. I don't really want it to be noticed that much, honestly. I want the effect of it without someone thinking, hey, there's a side chain happening. That sounds good to me. So doing a final check through uh, the mix here. Uh, I'm just going to look and make sure that we're removing the low end, the sub component of all the instruments that don't need it, right? So on the piano, we've got that being removed, but probably a bit more can be removed as well. So I'm going to pull this up until maybe it's about. I'm cutting in a bit to these frequencies, but that's fine. And we're going to move over to the guitar. You can see the two primary notes being used here and here, back and forth. So I can really bring this up quite a bit. Then on our lead synth, we've already dealt with that. The reverse synth is based on the lead synth, so it's done. The ghosties, they've got their things already good here too. Maybe pull it down a little bit on those guys, just to let those frequencies come through. The bass has nothing right now, and we don't want to take too much out, but we're just going to leave this maybe at 20 hertz on a 24 dB, just to cut any super low, muddy stuff that's beneath our hearing range, but leave everything else intact. On the noise channel, we've already dealt with that. The drums. Um, they're being dealt with over here on the drum bus. We have that Pro Q that's doing the, the top and bottom cut for them, and I'm happy with how they are. Then, of course, you can decide how do you like the mix so far? Do you want to pull these faders up and down? Is anything too loud, too quiet? You know, that's up for you to decide. The trick is listen at a quiet volume and see what pokes out. So don't play it loud where it sounds awesome. Play it quiet where it sounds small and just see, is there any elements, any drums that are particularly poking out of the mix? Can you hear the hi-hats? Let's check. Yes, but I can't really hear the ones in between. I'm just hearing the first one. So I might come into my impact and grab this other one and bring it up in gain. Kind of like that. The kick can come down a little bit. 
When you've got a good mix, you can you shouldn't really be able to move things by more than like 0.5 without disturbing it. I'm not going to go super in depth right now on it, but when you really get something balanced, things can be within 0.5 of perfection basically. And where you put it up 0.5 and you say, mm-mm, too loud now. So you're just trying to bring everything down to the point where it's, you know, just before it's too quiet or a conversely up to the point before it's too loud. You know, you get the general idea there. So you can be very specific with it. Here I'm just doing a, a general glance over everything to make sure it's roughly in check. But this might be not how you like it. You might want to go into the session that you're making or download, download the session I'm providing and change it up and see what you can do. That's of course totally fine. Let's get into this mastering chain, which is actually quite simple in this case. I mean, the whole thing has been quite simple, right? That's the point. So we're going to start with an EQ. So we'll just throw Pro EQ on there. And we're just going to, once again, just pull out everything at the very low end, 20 and below, just in case anything got caught. It's not necessary, but may as well. We're also going to pull out a little bit around... 200-ish, 200, 250. So let's grab this guy and put his, maybe around here, let's just see what this sounds like. It's so not much, maybe just. This is just a clean up. We have a lot of like low frequency stuff. Everything is muted and low. I want to make sure that that low mid range area isn't going to get too congested with frequencies down there. So we're just pulling a little bit out there and the rest I'm happy with. The nice thing about lo-fi is you don't have to do so much with all your EQ and all the fancy mixing techniques because it's meant to be lo-fi. It's meant to sound kind of grungy, gritty, whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of nice. So that's one thing. Then we're going to grab a compressor and we're gonna just gently squeeze the whole mix together so that things that are trying to poke out just get a little bit of squeeze, which helps with the dynamic range of the whole thing to make it louder overall, and also um, helps give a cohesion to the sound that when one element starts to jut out, everything is getting compressed together as if they're all attached in a certain way. So the main thing though, is that we also have this kick and the kick is gonna dominate this compressor right now. So let's just set it up. Let's leave it at two to one. This knee is fine. Let's go for an attack of, let's just make it simple, around 100 milliseconds and a release at around 100 milliseconds. So we don't wanna clamp down on every little transient. We wanna let stuff come through and just kind of let the whole mix get massaged a bit. And we're only looking for a little bit of gain reduction, two to three decibels at most. And so we're just gonna push play and see what happens. Pull the threshold down here until we start seeing something. So you can just watch this yellow here. All right, it's only kind of coming up on the kicks, a little bit on the snares. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want to just clamp down on the kick. I do want a little bit, but what I'm going to do is use the sidechain filtering, not an external sidechain. I'm not going to take another instrument and sidechain it. I'm just going to sidechain within itself. I'm going to filter some of the frequencies. So I'm going to filter everything, say, below 70 hertz and see what we get. So now everything that's below 70 hertz is not going to affect the compressor and everything above is. So now when the kick hits, we hardly see anything happening. So we can pull it down further. And now we see movement occurring also when there are buildups of regular frequencies. Let's pull this down. The kick is still really taking a big chunk. So I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. And that's pretty good. So I'm around two decibels of gain reduction. You could do more if you really wanna squeeze the thing. Um, it's up to you though, it's not a big deal. We're, it's, it's not supposed to be overly noticeable, we're just squeezing in a little bit and we're trying to exclude a bit of the kick. We still want it to react to the kick, of course, but not just the kick like it would have been before. And that's good for our compressor. So moving on, we're gonna to go to the last in our chain for today, which is gonna be our limiter, which of course should always be the last in your chain. This is gonna prevent you from clipping and allow you to get the highest possible uh, volume on your track. So all we're gonna do with this is just start bringing the gain up, the input gain into the limiter, until we start seeing this de uh, decibel reduction here, getting to maxing out on big hits around two or three dB, same as with the compressor. So let's just give that a shot. I'm also gonna pull my ceiling back 
maybe one dB. This is just to be safe for uh, this true peak meter because in the conversion process to an MP3, you can get these called intersample peaks. Often you can pull it back a dB and you should be fine. So let's, uh, let's start moving it up. So here we're getting 1.28 on those kicks. go so I'm just kind of getting a sense of where we're at overall I don't want to clip much more than three off the top of my peaks because I have put those peaks there that's where I want them to be so I'm just trying to get the music to be loud enough but not destroyed by my limiter and so one way to do that is since the kick is really what's pushing this thing the hardest I could bring the kick volume down a little bit more which I do think I should do overall and see how we feel when it's about a decibel and a half lower still feels fine to me, right? So let's click this to reset it. Snare is hitting at around minus one. The kick is not, is, yeah, occasionally when it hits with the bass, we're getting around two. So we're just add about a dB that I can add to this now. And that, that about does it. I've now got the whole mix basically balanced. I'm pushing it through this chain uh, to its maximum volume before I'm starting to destroy it with the limiter. And we're good to go. The only thing left to do is make a little arrangement out of it, meaning like bring elements in and out over time and whatever. Of course, it'd be nice to have a whole B section. If I was gonna make a real song out of this, I'd like to have a B section in here too. So I can alternate between two parts rather than just have one part loop for three minutes or since it's lo-fi loop for one minute. You know, you know what I'm talking about if you listen to lo-fi. Um, okay, so that's it. I'm going to finish off this uh, thing with a bit of an arrangement and I'm going to have this, as I mentioned, this session file is going to be available for you to download below the video if you want to check out my finished version and compare it to yours or if you didn't make one and you just want to check mine out, that's fine too. I hope you really enjoyed the video and yeah, please let me know in the comments how it was, what I can improve on and what you liked about it. Check out the links in the description and I'm live, of course, you might know, twice a week. You can check me out on YouTube here doing live streams uh, and as well other videos related to music and production and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it and you found it valuable and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.